Good evening, and welcome to Ascension. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. All of the music can be found in the bulletin. Our gathering song is All Creatures of Our God and King. Please rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Gathering together, it is good that we are here on this uh, wintry uh, blizzard that we've experienced. Uh, you've made it, so it's good that we are here uh, gathering together to, uh, to celebrate uh, this Sunday and to support one another in our lives of faith. Let us now call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of the people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let's be seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At the time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go back to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling now as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you have been purchased at a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated as teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So many tensions and disagreements between a two or more people would be solved so much easier if we just were clear about one thing. What do you want? What do you want? If we're clear about what it is that we want and we're vulnerable enough to make it known, sometimes really that's the sticking part. We know what we want, we just don't wanna kind of stick our necks out there and let people know that that's kind of where we're at. Maybe we're lonely and we are in need of company, but to actually tell someone that is to make oneself vulnerable. So to know what you want, to recognize it, and then to be vulnerable enough to present that, then so many human relationships would be so much easier. And 
so much more authentic to be able to relate to one another in that reality. Because so many of those uh, wants that we think that we want are things that perhaps maybe once we recognize them or say them out loud, we begin to recognize, well, maybe I don't really need that. Maybe we can compromise a bit more. This is essentially the question, what do you want, that Jesus turns around and asks these two disciples, what are you looking for? He's just very straight with them. He doesn't mix words or anything, simply, what are you looking for? What do you want? What are you here for? And that question resounds to us as well, still today. What are you looking for? What is missing in your life? What are you here today in need of? What do you want? Where is that area of, of your life that is in turmoil, that is in need of God's grace? Perhaps that place where you don't even want to recognize out loud because well, with that is a certain degree of vulnerability. The two disciples, they, I get this sense that they kind of stumble a little bit. The, direct, the, the directness of the question, oh, oh, uh, where are you staying? They don't really want to express out loud yet all that it is that they are hopeful for, for John the Baptist had just told them, he's it. He's the one. He's the one that you've been following me to wait for me to point out to you. So here's that moment. And thank God they act on it. They start to follow after him and this blunt question and their answer as best as they can put it. Where are you staying? Come and you will see. In our first reading, the prophet uh, high priest Eli is in the temple and he is there for Samuel to hear the Lord's voice. But Eli doesn't recognize it at first, nor does Samuel, because, well, the both of them are unaware that God is speaking directly to Samuel. Eli has gotten mixed up before. He's the one who saw Hannah, Samuel's mother, in the temple murmuring, and Eli thought she was drunk. He said, get out of here, woman. What are you doing here? And she explains how much she wants a child. And so Eli uh, prophesies and says that you indeed will bear a child. Eli has this reputation of not getting it right away. But he is there nonetheless. And then when the Lord calls, he finally recognizes that his answer should simply be, here I am. Here I am, Lord. That hymn from the 80s that scared the living bejesus out of me. Here I am, Lord, became, uh, here I'm not, Lord, find somebody else. And yet, all of us in our own way are called upon to proclaim that here I am. I'm ready. What is it that you want from me? And these two realities, these two simple answers come together in a way that presents the tension of the Christian life. Eli's uh, guidance to Samuel helps Samuel to recognize that God is coming to him. He is in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant, but God is coming to him. And in fact, that's the wholeness, the fullness of the incarnation, wherein Paul is able to proclaim that we are a temple of the Lord because Christ has made the human body 
the dwelling place of the divine. Samuel is to recognize that he is to simply be present and recognize God's desire to come to him. Christ's answer, however, is come and see. You can't just stay where you're at. You can't just stay with John the Baptist and continue this life that maybe has become somewhat comfortable, even though I highly doubt a life with John the Baptist to be comfortable, but nonetheless, he calls them out of that. Come and see. Here I am, and come and see. There's the tension there and the recognition that God comes to us no matter where we are, no matter what difficulties we're experiencing, God's desire to be with us in that. And yet God doesn't just want us to stay there. God wants us to call us out of that. Come and see. Come and see what glory I have waiting for you. In this encounter that Andrew has with Jesus at this time, at his home where they must have just simply sat and talked, how wonderful that would be if more of us were able to do the, just that. To visit with one another, to sit and talk without fear and all of that. And there's something about this meeting. Andrew goes home and tells his brother, I have found the Messiah. And there's that curious line. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. What's that all about? Those major moments in our lives, those moments when we reflect on years later, we remember strange details about where you were and what you were doing, how it felt that day, any number of large events that any of us have encountered in our lives. Small, strange details tend to stick out. And for Andrew, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. He found what he was looking for. He found everything. Looking into the eyes of his creator, he saw the answer to the questions that he wasn't brave enough to fully ask. He ran home and got his brother, and he brought his brother right away to just be in the presence of God. We have opportunities here in Mass and throughout our lives to be in the presence of God, to come to him so that he can be with us where we're at. We open our hearts the way Andrew did, maybe just a little bit at first, maybe just small steps, but recognizing that ultimately what God is calling us to is the fullness of all that we are looking for. To see within him our God made flesh, the fullness of everything, the answer to everything. Here I am, come and see. God is calling us to a new way of life. Recognizing that we are in the presence of God, let us proclaim our one faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begot and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present our petitions to our loving God, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. that those who lead our church may receive God's guidance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering oppression throughout the world may experience the peace of Christ in their lands and in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who struggle with chronic physical ailments may grow strong under the gentle and nurturing hand of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus' love may conform us evermore to his own heart as we strive to follow him more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Norma Payne, mother of Doug Payne, who has entered into her eternal rest in the heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parish for whom this Mass is being celebrated, and that the souls of all the faithful departed may find eternal peace in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our book of intentions and for all those prayers which we hold within the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, hear the prayers of your people who have been called to follow your Son. Answer them in your goodness, for we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For praise and glory of the Lord. Our good and of all his holy name. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Regis, St. Corona, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity the pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace, Christ. Peace, brother.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Not to mention at the beginning of Mass, we'll have the blessing of the child in the womb if there's Anyone here who would like to, or in need of that blessing? Nobody? Okay. Have this prayer instead for uh, God's blessing to be bestowed on our parish. God, our most loving Father, we beseech your grace in the lives of our loved ones who are struggling to conceive a child. Through the intercession of Mary, our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, May these couples receive the gift of a child they so desire. May families who have lost a child also know the healing power of your grace in their lives. May this parish community come to respect life more and more and welcome your gift of life in abundance so that we may continue to re represent your love for the world. We ask this through the holy name of Christ our Lord. Amen. There is continuing signups for the 40 hours of hope and healing starting Monday evening at 8. If you don't really do computer, Patrick does computer, and he's in the back, he can sign you up. And so rest assured that 3 o'clock in the morning is still available. I know you're really wanting it, but I will do it if no one else wants to take it. Uh, there's poinsettias in the back as well. So Patrick and poinsettias. I'll see if I can do that again. Um, so if you want a poinsettia, you can take a poinsettia or two or three. Uh, there's a Right to Life rally Friday in downtown. Um, I'll be speaking at that very briefly. Uh, so that's Friday uh, in, at noon at uh, downtown. So you can find more information on that online. It's so good to be with you all. So good to celebrate this Mass together, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. <laughs>